It is great to have you with us on opening night in the SEC. Eric Freed, Christy Thomas-Scuddy here with you, and the beat goes on for South Carolina. 12-0 in non-conference play so far. They still have UConn coming up on February 5th. That means 18 consecutive wins if you count, and you should, the six in a row at the end of last season when they ended with a national championship. It's just so impressive that they continue to raise their level game after game. And why? because the players have continued to mature. The 2019 number one recruiting class is now seniors. And what does that mean? It means they're doing all the things necessary to win another national championship, meaning they are number one in rebounding, number one in block shots, number one in field goal percentage defense. All these things take pressure off of their half court offense. When they can get out and transition, when they can score easy putbacks off of, off of second chance points, it allows their players to play more freely and allows their veterans to go to work on the offensive end. In all the senior class, a total of eight losses. You take a look at that senior class success and they continue to build on it this year. Their motivation being back-to-back -back national champions entering that elite company. On the other side, here is Texas A&M. It is a season of change. You know Joni Taylor. She was a standout player at Alabama, an excellent coach at Georgia. Now in her first year at Texas A&M, this has been a team that's been hit hard by injuries, and they're also learning Joni's system. Well, the first thing is change the culture. And as much about the defense, and the number one thing she has brought with her from UGA is stingy defense. The number 34 team in the country in scoring defense. A lot of pressure on these young ladies tonight to slow down the Gamecocks. And right off the tip, Cook is fouled as South Carolina, as they have been known to do, looks for the first points of the game and the first seconds of the game off the opening tip. And they'll have a chance at the free throw line just four seconds in as Cook will go to the free throw line. So this is a monumental challenge for this Texas A&M team. We'll tell you about their roster. They do have eight available and dressed here tonight. Their last two games, they only had seven as Cook gets the first points of the game. What needs to happen today for Texas A&M to hang with South Carolina, Christy? They've got to control the rebound situation. They have not been a good rebounding team. Joni Taylor told us we need to keep it within a 10 margin. That's a huge task for any team, much less the undersized Aggies. So this is the Texas A&M starting five. Sydney Bowles is the freshman, the leading active scorer. KK Green is coming off a game where she played all 40 minutes against Purdue. Erin Kindred, her third straight start. Sahara Jones has started each game, and Aliyah Patty is the leading rebounder. Shot clock is down to three. We expect it to wind down today. Bowles running into the elite defender for South Carolina. That's Bree Beal. Boston out to Fletcher will step in for the two. And Eric, you asked me what a and needed to do. The second piece of this equation is shot selection. They need to be very consistent in the types of looks. Long rebounds will allow South Carolina to get out in transition. And you do expect a and to really let this shot clock wind down. Right? They need to just to limit the possessions on each side in this game. Once again, the shot clock winds down. It's down to two. Something has to happen in a hurry here for Patty. Two trips and they both result in turnovers for the Aggies. So Kara Fletcher getting her 11th start at the point will bring it up for South Carolina. We talk about Beal's defense, Victoria Saxon, a three-year starter for the South Carolina team. Aaliyah Boston, eight double-doubles on the season. She's tied up by Sahara Jones, and the possession arrow will give it to a and m And Zaya Cook is the leading scorer for the South Carolina team at 14 points a game. KK Green at the port. They do get McKenzie Green back off an injury. She missed the last two games, so we'll see her come off the bench. Three-pointer on the way is off the mark, one and done. Saxton with the rebound for South Carolina. South Carolina second in Division I in rebounding margin. They are at plus 22 on the season. Cook drives the lane for two. Well, and Eric, a big part of that rebounding is the dribble penetration. They force rotations, allowing them to get to the rim. That time they didn't need a rotation because Zaya Cook took it all the way. Kindred. Back to Patty. 
Patty will try it from outside the three-point line. 14 attempts on the season. Once again, the shot clock is single digits. Jones on the pull-up. Fletcher the rebound. And South it. Carolina wants to run. Good job by the freshman Bowles to get the steal, and she'll take it to the basket for an AM hoop. Well, what I was going to say is you're already seeing the game plan of AM. They're conceding the offensive rebounds to try to prevent a, uh, the South Carolina from getting out in transition. That time, great by Bowles to shoot the gap. Foul on Sahara Jones on the inside as you take a look at Dawn Staley, 15th season as South Carolina's head coach. Had a nice chat with her pregame today and happy to report for you non-Philadelphia Eagles fans. We ran out of time, so she didn't really have a chance to get into her beloved Eagles. Beal, so I can't pass along the trash talk she would offer up <laughs> in praise of her Eagles. That's a good job by the freshman to tie it up with Aaliyah Boston. Possession arrow will keep it out South Carolina's end. Well, you're noticing Texas A&M running a zone out of bounds. It's something South Carolina worked on today during practice. I think it's a win for A&M if they can force South Carolina to have to execute in the half court throughout this game, but much less on out of bounds plays. Boston on the drive. Good job defensively by A&M, and then a foul is going to be called. And it's going to go against the Aggies, much to the chagrin of Joni Taylor on the Texas A&M bench. Kindred gets whistled for the foul. Well, give Patty credit for just walling up. The problem right now for the Aggies is the offense for South Carolina never ends until the ball goes through the hoop. They are relentless on the glass, so they're going to have to stay in defensive mode and try to prevent these second and third opportunities for South Carolina. Already three fouls. Cook will try it from the outside. No, they're Sexton. And that's the fourth foul called on Texas A&M here in the opening moments. First reserve comes in for Texas A&M. It's Jada Malone. She brings size to the post, 6-3. And these post players, Patty and Malone, will be put to the test today, and Joni Taylor will have to balance their minutes. They are without Sydney Roby. Here are the ones who are on the bench to play the role of cheerleader, but unable to play here today. Janiah Barker is a leading scorer. She has a wrist injury. Tanea Hilton, Roby we just talked about. She's getting surgery tomorrow. MJ Johnson suffered a preseason ACL injury. Well, as much as the minutes and the fouls because of the foul trouble A&M's in, it's the point production. You're talking about almost 24 points sitting on the bench right now for Joni Taylor and the Aggies for a team that is last in the SEC in scoring through non-conference play at 57 points a game. So they can't afford to lose those offensive pieces, but they are making do without. Bowles on the drive is fouled by Fletcher. Now, the, the medical update is pretty encouraging. Janaya Barker, you see her there. She's very active, a cheerleader. See her right wrist there wrapped up. They hope to get her back. She hasn't played the last three games with a wrist injury. Hilton might be back within the next week or two, it sounds like, as she's out of her walking boot. I mentioned Roby getting surgery in Milwaukee. The hope is that maybe she can come back before the end of the year. So there's a lot of hope over there, but there's just not a lot of bodies put into the game. But the one who comes off the bench gets it done, Jada Malone with the hoop. Well, I think it's important for Texas A&M to take advantage when both Malone and Patty are on the court. They're two tallest players. Joni Taylor told us we can't play them together a lot, so can they cut into the deficit when they're both on the floor? Malone battling Boston for position gets called for the foul. It's going to be two free throws, four minutes into the first quarter, and South Carolina is going to be at the line for the rest of the quarter. And one thing as the fouls add up. As we mentioned, there are eight healthy players for Texas A&M, so if they get into foul trouble, that spells trouble for them here tonight. First point for Boston, averaging better than 12 a game. 11 points, 10 rebounds, last time out against Coastal Carolina. In just 13 minutes. There's Saxton got inside, and again, so tough. South Carolina on the glass, getting those second chance opportunities. And Eric, what we're seeing, this is the sixth foul on Texas A&M. Five of those have been on the rebounding effort. It's one thing to see 
South Carolina on film to know how much they pursue rebounds. It's another thing to have to do it live. So that's two fouls on Ernie Kindred. Dawn Staley's team, you know, there, there are things to work on and fix. <laughs> it's contagious because Jolette Law was giving the same look as the head coach, <laughs> the assistant coach, longtime assistant. Free throw shooting has not been strong for South Carolina, 66%. Three point shooting has not been strong, 29%. There are areas of improvement for the number one team in the country, no question about it. And that's why they're number one, is that they are never happy until they continue to basically hide some of the flaws. And we've seen teams pack it in. We see right now four maroon jerseys surrounding Aaliyah Boston when she catches the ball, and that's the game plan. Make her be a passer, make her turn the ball over. Aaliyah Boston caught in the lane for three seconds, so a turnover for South Carolina. They average 13 a game. And a legal screen is going to be called on Jada Malone. And Joni Taylor told me today regarding turnovers, they needed to limit them, meaning for the bigs especially, no more three seconds, no more illegal screens as we see Jada Malone just pick up her second. And you see what Joni Taylor has to do. Kindred stays on the floor with two personal fouls. Malone stays on the floor with two personal fouls with 5.23 to go in the first quarter. Usually that's an instant ticket to the bench, but not in this case for shorthanded A&M. Absolutely, you know, and some people say, well, go zone. Well, the problem right now for the Aggies is the rebounding perspective. They're not doing it in the half court necessarily. They're doing it when the shot goes up. That's when they're committing these fouls. Boston backs in on Patty, stands her ground, and another foul is called on Texas A&M. That is the eighth foul called on the Aggies. And we're not even five minutes in. Well, we talked about how South Carolina was one of the top rebounding teams in the nation. Not only do they rebound their own misses, they put them back up for points. They about they are rebounding almost 50% of their misses on the season. It takes so much pressure off of their half-court offense. And right now you're seeing Texas A&M, they're getting caught in a contesting situation instead of shot goes up, turning and looking to box out. So substitutions now for Texas A&M. Myra Petticord, freshman from Detroit, comes into the game. Jada Malone did get whistled for her third personal foul. So that's the risk that A&M took, and it's costly. They will get Kindred out of the game with her two fouls. Sahara Jones comes in. And that's going to put so much pressure now on Aaliyah Patty to stay on the floor because she is the only big left for AM. And then South Carolina goes to their bench, and who they bring in? <laughs> Camilla Cardozo. Talk about big. She'll work against Patty in the post. KK Green. Bowles, excellent three point shooter. Raven Johnson into the game, extending the defense. Jones trying to take Boston off the dribble. Jones to the hoop, beautiful reverse, won't drop, and there's Cardoso with the rebound. Eight rebounds a game for Cardoso. Leticia Me here into the game. You see how effortless she makes it look when she comes in. She gets her first two. I mean, Leticia Me here just is the Swiss Army knife of any basketball player I've seen this season. Can play any position on the floor, can defend any position on the floor, and is so good with the basketball in her hands. Kick out to Patty over the outstretched arm of Cardoso and Ami here who can put it on the floor. Head up. There's only one person who could catch that pass. It was Cardoso, but she got caught in a little too deep to finish it. Joni Taylor tells KK Green to put on the brakes. And most teams off a missed layup or a turnover like that would take off running in transition. You see the pace a and wants to play at. Ami here takes it away from the freshman and takes it in for two. Bulls. They're trying to find 
an opening for Bowles to shoot. Finally, she launches, but it's too strong, and Raven Johnson, this is where she's good. Transition, get into the open court, show her playmaking and her handle. Boston shuffles through for two. I got to believe Joni Taylor's trying to get to this media timeout, trying not to have to burn a timeout here. And you can just see some fatigue starting to set in for the Aggies. It is a 10-0 run, and we are more than two minutes into this media timeout window. So this has been an extended run here for this shorthanded A&M team. Jones to Green. Bowles will launch in and out. Raven Johnson on the pull-up. Johnson on the follow. Got to get a timeout now. 12-0 run for the number one team in the country. Joni Taylor told us it's one thing to watch South Carolina on film. It's another thing to understand what it takes to beat them. It's transition defense, picking them up sooner, and it is stopping the dribble penetration. South Carolina on a roll. Opening night in SEC play, and it's a great night because you turn the page. You go from non-conference play to the rivalry games, the matchups. And right now, South Carolina, number one team in the country in control in the early going. Just one of many on the schedule here tonight. There were two earlier starts. Mississippi State impressively up big in Nashville. Tennessee getting a good game from Rakia Jackson. She has 13 of the 43 in the lead against Florida. Big showdown, top 25 showdown. LSU undefeated, much like South Carolina in the early going, and Ole Miss off to a good start so far. You've been impressed from Mississippi State. You had a chance to see them earlier this year, and this is a team that's one to watch. Absolutely. I think they've got all the pieces. They've got the size. They've got the guard play. And when you talk about size, Right now, South Carolina is utilizing theirs in the biggest way. They are just beasts on the glass so far against an mm. undersized A&M team. They get it done, and they're getting it done so far. 13-2 advantage, and again, you said best case scenario. Joni Taylor, and she understood. When we talked to her this morning, she knows what her team is up against, a team that is well coached, that is deep. They have 14 who play, although South Carolina has 13 available today. Bree Hall out with an injury day-to-day, -day, lower right leg injury. But when you look at what A&M needed, she said, you know, if we keep it to minus 10 in rebounding margin, you'd feel pretty good. Right now it's already minus 11 in rebounding margin. I want to just jump back before we get back into this game, SEC. Uh, you know, here we are opening night. I got to get the Christy Thomas Getty crystal ball. Who's the team to watch? Who's the surprise? Who's the team at the end of the year? Like, ooh, we did not see that coming. But Christy Thomas Getty on December 29th told me to keep an eye on I think I think it's LSU. I, I, everyone came in. I mean, it's not a big crystal ball. I think we came into the season wondering about LSU, but I think we weren't quite sure because of the weaker non-conference schedule. And already Angel Reese, 6.6 .6 rebounds, still in the first quarter, going for her 13th double double on the season. I was thinking of somebody off the board, maybe, but I that's think, fine. You well, can go I'll, with I'll LSU. Give it to you. I'll give it to you. All right, good. I think Alabama. I think when Christy Curry has a veteran team like we see this year, that's when the Crimson Tide is most dangerous. So I'm, I'm following along with that Georgia-Alabama score here this evening as well. Alabama and Georgia. Bama's won nine in a row. They've got Megan Abrams, Brittany Davis, both 1,000-point scores in their career at Alabama. I'm glad I, I got you there, though. I mean, LSU, I'm like, well, look what LSU's done. They're 12-0. and 0, They're dominant. I'm glad I got, like, I like the Alabama pick. That takes a little guts, Christy thomas Scotty. Well, I, I still think LSU's an unknown commodity, oh. so to speak. Cardoso with the block, and then the foul is called on Pettacourt. And you're not calling on Alabama to win the SEC. You're just no. like, that's a team that's going to be better than people may have expected going this season. I like that. Okay. I can always count on you. <laughs> Go out on that out on that limb. Well, one thing that South Carolina did great last year winning the national championship, block shots. Number one in Division I, 7.4 blocks per game on average. This year, they're averaging three more than that so far through 12 games of the season. Better than 10 blocks a game. 
Who's their number two leader in shot blocks? Well, there's a tie. There's Cardoso, there's Boston, and then there's Bree Beal, the lockdown defender. Exactly. And so here's the bottom line. I could talk a lot about how good, from an athlete-to-athlete -athlete perspective, South Carolina is. But when you talk about depth, when you talk about length, there is such a margin of error for the Gamecocks. And you can see perimeter players allowed to get up and overplay passing lanes, overplay a ball handler, because you've got rim protectors behind them that you're daring young guards to take in and against. Every shot for Texas A&M just seems rushed and forced as they try to find anything open against this defense. South Carolina goes deeper into their bench. Sanaya Fagan, the sophomore post, is into the game. During that last media timeout, by the way, the officials went to the monitor. They did change one of the Texas A&M fouls. They took a foul away from Jada Malone, so now she has two. The catch is they gave it to Kindred, so she's the one with three now. Well, I think if you're an Aggies fan, you'll take that trade off just because it gives you a bigger player back on the floor oh. for the Aggies. Me here got a hand on it, but then out of the scramble, KK Green gets the basket. As I mentioned, played all 40 last time out against Purdue, had a career high 14 points, six assists, and three steals. So it's KK Green doing all she can to battle for Texas A&M. So Eric, the biggest difference in this game right now, if you if you really boil it down, is. South Carolina's second chance opportunities are at the rim or they're able to get to the rim and transition. Oh, look at the hustle. Brie Beal gets down on the deck. Ami here was down on the deck as well. Pettacord gets there for Texas A&M. Crowd here, another big crowd, of course, at CLA. Applauding the effort. Well, why is South Carolina number one? They don't play the scoreboard. Loose ball, Letitia Mihir running in transition, and then Bree Bill, one of the best, if not the best, on ball defenders in the country, laying her body on the line to try to get possession. Give Sydney Bowles credit as well for Texas A&M for getting on the floor. Fagan gets called for the travel. Four turnovers in the quarter for South Carolina. And Eric, I want to finish my, my synopsis of what we're seeing so far. What South Carolina has forced A&M into is a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. And that's not their bread and butter. They are so much better when they can work together. In their two most, two most recent wins, I shouldn't say wins, games, a win over SMU and a really hard-fought game against Purdue, the offense was going through all five players on the floor. We're not seeing that here tonight. Jones rejected by Cardozo, who spikes it out to Johnson, and South Carolina will hold 4-1. A&M going zone here on this possession. Johnson with five. Beal to Fagan with two, with one. Count it for Sanaya Fagan. They'll go to the monitor just to confirm, but it looks to be a, a good ending to what was a good start to this game for South Carolina. On the defensive end, Cardoso with the block and the spike to start things the other way. And then Fagan in plenty of time. All Carolina after one in Columbia. Welcome back to Colonial Life Arena. And we started this game talking about the rebounding prowess of South Carolina. And they have not disappointed. Six offensive rebounds already in the game, leading to 10 of their 24 points in the game. Texas A&M has got to do a better job of checking South Carolina, or this is gonna be a long afternoon. Rebounds plus 12 in margin right now in the second chance points, as Christie's talked about. So much of South Carolina's offense comes from those second chance opportunities, and they just come at you in waves. There you see three starters on the bench right now, Fletcher and Boston and Saxton. So. We've seen Fagan make an impact, and me here make an impact, Cardoso make an impact, and there you see on the right side of your screen the newest member of this South Carolina team who just is appearing in her third game. That's Chloe Kitts, the freshman from Florida who graduated from high school early and figured, well, no time like the present to join my future team. The future is now, and she is now enrolled and playing for South Carolina. 
I mean, honestly, it's like a fresh, I mean, it's like a senior in high school going and taking graduate level courses. That's my respect for where this South Carolina team is right now. And the fact that Chloe Kitts has come in and earned playing court time is remarkable to me. South Carolina was ready to take off the other way, but KK Green had other ideas to get the hoop. Well, one thing about Texas A&M, they're going to play hard. They're not going to give up. No team that's under Joni Taylor's tutelage is going to do that. It's just right now they've got to play smarter. They've got to do those little things, limit South Carolina to one shot. Jada Malone back into the game. Remember, we told you they corrected a foul, so she's playing with two right now. When i got to believe this run for Malone is just to give – Aaliyah Patty, just a longer break, using the quarter break and now just a couple extra minutes to let her get her legs back under her. A reminder, Sydney Roby missing her fourth consecutive game for Texas A&M with a knee injury. Here's Pettacord, back to Green, the floater too strong, and the rebound for Kitts. Numbers the other way, Pettacord will pull the trigger from three in transition, no good in a me here. Well, slow things down. And that's a shot Jody Taylor doesn't want her team to take right now because that could have allowed South Carolina to get out and run. Cardoso gets swarmed and fouled. So the fouls piled up early in the first quarter and foul here on a and You see Cardoso just backing down a and defensively. And a and almost trying to be bigger, so they're walling up vertically, and that's preventing them to get into box-out position. Second personal foul on Sahara Jones, and here is Camilla Cardoso in her second season with South Carolina. Has elevated her game this year. Free throw woes continue for South Carolina. We still have more basketball to come tonight. Doubleheader will close out with Kentucky taking on Mizzou. 9 o'clock Eastern time right here on the SEC Network. Of course, Kentucky put what was a <laughs> rare blemish as Aaliyah Boston's back into the game on South Carolina's memorable season last year, and that was Kentucky won the SEC Tournament Championship. One of the things on South Carolina's list that they did not get a season ago, that is one of their motivations for this year. So you'll see Kentucky, the defending SEC Tournament Champions, in their SEC opener against 11-2 Mizzou coming up after we're done here in Columbia. Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you, my Columbia straight. <laughs> Traveling violation called on KK Green. So in this configuration on the floor right now for South Carolina, which of their four point guards is the point guard right now? Leticia Mihir. I mean, that's what I asked on Staley about today. I said, to me, it seems like you've got four trump cards when it comes to point guard. And she just laughed. She said, yep, I can play them any way I want to. Boston, no, picked up by Pettacord. No need to rush here for Texas A&M. So how does South Carolina use those point guards? How are they different? Well, you've got Kiara Fletcher, who has the four-year experience at running the point. Steady, probably the better just pull-up jump shooter when Zaya Cook's in the off-guard role. Good block you've here by Fagan. Fagan, who can rim protect, who's got rim protect, who's not going to run the point. <laughs> but you've got Raven Johnson as well, who's very quick. And again, it allows your perimeter players to be true defenders when you've got rim protectors, as we just saw. But with Letitia Mir here, it just gives such length of versatility as we see her taking off in transition yet again. Trying to fill up the highlight reel at that point guard spot, but turned it over. Tough pass for the freshman to handle, and after watching that, Dawn Staley is going <laughs> to bring Kiara Fletcher back into the game. Sydney Bowles checks back in for Texas A&M. There is McKinsey Green. Missed the last two games with an ankle injury. Malone throws it away. Tried to get it to Pettacord. 
Turnover number seven for the Aggies. Christie referenced the last game for Texas A&M. They lost to Purdue last Wednesday by six. They had seven players available for the second straight game. The game was tied at 49 with three and a half minutes to go. Game before that pulled it out with seven players against SMU. This is a team that will play hard. They'll try to hang in there, but right now it may be a tough ask when you're facing the number one team in the country that can go deep into the bench like they are right now with Senator Fagan adding two more to her total. Where we've talked about the differences from a depth perspective, 14 players or 13 tonight playing for South Carolina, just the seven, eight tonight for South But the other major difference for me is just the experience factor. We've talked about this senior class for South Carolina, A&M being the second youngest team in the SEC and it's showing here this evening. Timeout is called by Texas A&M, South Carolina, stretching the lead out to 19 here in the second quarter. All right, Peter, thanks very much. All South Carolina, the bench has been impressive as we've come to expect from this team that regularly plays 14. And it's not just because they have a margin of victory that's near 40. It's that Dawn Staley just wants to have everybody ready to go and have that flexibility, have that depth, have that luxury, a word she threw out a couple of times when we talked to her earlier today. You see the top 25, three teams in the top 25, but well, there's the players on the bench right now. I, you see Olivia Thompson down there. She had the big shot that got things going against Stanford in the first half in that one versus two matchup earlier this season. So everyone has had a hand. There are fingerprints all over this early season success for South Carolina. Well, it just allows Don Staley to continue to work on layups, work on matchups against different types of defenses, different types of lineups, and bottom line, just prepares this team for March. So far in this game, we have not seen the freshman Talasia Cooper or Ashlyn Watkins for South Carolina. I'd expect we get a heavy dose of those two in the second half. We're just four minutes into the second quarter. Texas A&M had to burn a timeout as their players are getting burned out, trying to defend and keep up with the South Carolina team. Malone inside is fouled. On the way up, she'll shoot two. Great execution by A&M. Forced the switch on the screen on the ball, made the extra pass, and then found Malone down low. The on-ball screen, and I like that she looked to power it up and get by the smaller Fletcher. And honestly, I was upset they didn't give Malone the ball when the, it was on the left wing. So good job by Malone to continue to fight and demand the ball. So Jada Malone will take the first free throws of the night for Texas A&M. South Carolina already 9 of 14 from the line. Jada, the sophomore from Spring, Texas, who's been very good on the offensive glass. 54% of her boards coming on the offensive glass, going up against a team that thrives in that category. Well, Eric, I asked Joni Taylor today, what is it like to play South Carolina first game of SEC play? She goes, I'm happy about it. I'm excited. Which I must say, when she said that, <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't part of a punchline as it knocks in a three. First three-pointer made for either team so far here tonight. But she, she was sincere about it. Why do you think she was happy to play South Carolina here tonight? Well, I honestly, without the true numbers, they're overmatched against the South Carolina team right now. So it doesn't matter if they're playing in February. However, this will be a great learning experience as we're already seeing them play better now here in the second quarter than they did in the first quarter. So many of these players have never experienced playing against a team like South Carolina. They did a year ago, but in such a limited role, limited minutes. Tonight, a lot's demanded of them, and we're seeing them start to respond here in the second quarter. Bowles answered the Zaya Cook three, one of, one of her own. Shot clock down now to nine for South Carolina. Freshman tries the three, no. Boston gets inside position. Joni Taylor in the A&M bench wondering where the traveling violation was. Instead, it's a foul. Well, another offensive rebound because you didn't see five Aggie players turn in box. 
One player did. No one, for whatever reason, decided to box out Aaliyah Boston. She had free reign to the glass. Well, as you can tell with Aaliyah's hair, Christmas is not over for Aaliyah Boston, happy to say. I mean, these are the things I want to know. You know, she, she's got the green and the red for Christmas, and I said, you know, are you the type of person who leaves the Christmas tree up until, like, February? Are we going to see red and green? And she said, no, no, I got something coming in January for everybody. But, I mean, we are within the window of the 12 days of Christmas here, so I think we can accept that look. Well, you know my anal self. I needed an exact date. <laughs> when can I take my tree down? And she gave me January 15th for the next hair appointment. All right. So... Aaliyah Boston heads to the bench. Talaysha Cooper into the game now for South Carolina. Ashlyn Watkins into the game for South Carolina. Here comes Cooper. Cooper all the way, blocking foul. Well, you got to know turnovers allow South Carolina to get out. Ball still moving there, good call by the official. And it's something I've been watching, is Texas A&M is sprinting back to the paint. No one is stopping ball, and that's putting even more pressure on their transition defense so far. Second foul on Sydney Bowles. I think she was still moving laterally because there is no arc as far as taking a charge in transition because she was the primary defender there. I know that's what Eric was wondering. Well, I just wait for you <laughs> to fill me in. Another turnover here for Texas A&M and South Carolina will have the basketball 4.18 to go here in the second quarter. Now the point guard, Johnson, gets in there on the offensive glass. South Carolina a plus 15 in rebounding margin. And it went back to the same play with an on-ball screen from Malone to roll, but Saxton came in from the weak side to take away the mismatch. Bowles has real deep range, tried to show it there. And a foul is called on South Carolina. I think Bowles is a pl young player who's going to benefit when Hilton, when Green gets back, well, I should say is playing more because she needs to get set up for that three-point opportunity. So much has been expected with the injuries for her to have to create off the bounce. So much better at catch and shoot at this point in her career. Malone on the way down, lost the handle, picked up by Cooper. Cooper! Nifty handle for Cook. The kick to Johnson. Three won't drop. South Carolina's not done yet. Cooper, a second chance here for the Gamecocks. Cook drains a three. 37% from outside the three-point line in the season. She was at 29% last year, so improvement there for the senior from Toledo. Bringing them up to 16 second chance points. And Eric, I watched specifically on that last offensive possession by South Carolina. The bigs for A&M did a great job boxing out. It's the perimeter players for the Aggies that got to do a better job now. Patty tries a three, that's off the mark. And South Carolina will have the basketball. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Off the offensive rebound, Cook steps into it and knocks it down. Zai has been steady throughout her career. Last five games averaging 17 points a game. So she's been on a pretty good run to lead into conference play. Opening night in the SEC. Cooper tries a three. Patty with the rebound. Green. Rejected by Johnson. Everyone getting in on the block party for South Carolina tonight. 
Well, I wasn't sure why A&M re-screamed because they had the mismatch, but Raven Johnson does, says it doesn't matter if I'm big or not, I got this. That's your point guard protecting the rim. Shot clock at four. Oh, Malone explodes down the lane and finishes for two. Jada Malone with the hoop for Texas A&M. Quickly back the other way comes Cooper. And Patty just let her go because she didn't want to commit another foul. Patty has one personal. Kindred the only one with more than two. Cooper. The up quick to Cook. Cook. Can't get the three. Cooper with the offensive rebound and the seize part. Takes advantage of the opening and puts in two more. What Joni Taylor told us, as worried as I am about the bigs of South Carolina, it is their perimeter players that concern me on the offensive glass. These last couple of possessions, it's been the guards for South Carolina creating the second chance opportunities. Cooper showing that quickness. Gets to it. Gets to the basket for two. Timeout, Texas A&M. Last night on opening night, last year rather, on opening night in the SEC, South Carolina went to Mizzou and were upset by Missouri. No chance of that here tonight as they have come out firing and everyone who's gotten on the floor has had a chance to contribute. Well, you learn from Pat previous mistakes. And so you're seeing South Carolina come out from the jump tonight, being aggressive in what they do best. That's defense, that's transition, that is second chance opportunities. I mean, the list is long. You can keep going if you want. That's Rim the way it is right shot now. blocks, great defense. They're sharing the ball well. Uh, you know, I, I say this, and Eric, we, you and I talked a lot about this during one of the breaks. Don calls it luxury. I call it margin of error. When you don't have to worry about making that first shot, when you're scoring 50% of your points on second chance opportunities. It takes so much pressure off of the guard play, which was the question mark for South Carolina coming into this season. Well, to this point in the season, that question mark has been erased. With an exclamation point or two. Final minute of the first half. Jones, shot clock down to four. Down to two. Jones is fouled with a shot clock at one, and she'll shoot two. And Eric, that's a possession where, again, Jones having to create one-on-one. -on -one. I look at the floor, you've got four other Aggies standing still. That allows South Carolina's help side just to stay solid. So much pressure on the one-on-one -on -one creating skills on the Aggies right now. Sorry, Jones to the free throw line. First point of the evening for the junior from San Antonio. 9.6 boards against Purdue last time out. She has started each game this season. 30 minutes a game. Here's a player who had two total starts the last two seasons for Texas A&M. Someone who has been thrust into a bigger role for the Aggies. Cook wasting no time, trying to get a two for one. And a tie up, possession arrow will keep it with South Carolina. Shot clock and game clock just about synced up. Don Staley telling her team one shot. Either that or lob, because she was pointing up. And with this set, could very well be the lob. Yeah, they're going to reset the shot clock to 20 here just to get it straight. They go for the lob up to Watkins. Bowles throws it off of Saxton, and it will be Texas A&M ball. The Aggies could hold for a final shot. Don did want one shot. Again, teaching opportunities, even when they're the number one team in the country. <laughs> Pedicord. Hounded by Cook.
Picked up a dribble. Now back out to Bowles. Bowles will launch off the mark for three. Rebound, and that will do it for the first half. 43-18 our score at halftime, and everybody, it seemed, had a hand in it on the offensive end and or the defensive end for South Carolina. We talk a lot about Boston. We talk a lot about Zy Cook, but this is a team that is on a mission as evidence in that first half. Up 24-6 after one. The lead is 43-18 at halftime. Let's get you to our studio. Peter, Steffi, and Nikki. They've got you covered at halftime. Back inside Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina, just a moment away from the start of the third quarter. The number one team in the country up by 25 at halftime on opening night in the SEC. Eric Free, Christy thomas Scuddy, back here with you at courtside. We knew Texas A&M was in trouble here today. They're down two starters, shorthanded to begin with, and then they run into this deep South Carolina team that's clicking on all cylinders right now. Absolutely. We talked about why are they in contention to win another championship? Because of their defense, because of their rebounding, and it was on full display in the first half. Because they can get you in a variety of ways. We talked about it right at the very top of the telecast. It's on the glass. It's with the defense. Transition half court. And we saw all of that here in the first half. Seven steals for the Gamecocks that convert in 12 easy points in transition. And then when they weren't getting out in transition, they were beating the Aggies off the bounce and getting second chance opportunities. 11 offensive rebounds in the first half, leading to 18 second chance. I got to believe for Texas A&M, a big part of that halftime speech was boxing out and maintaining the box out because to this point in the game, South Carolina has been feasting on the glass. To the numbers in the first half, struggling from the field were the Aggies in that first half, seven of 26 shooting in the bench points, 21 off the bench for Dawn Staley's team. And there is Aaliyah Boston there defensively on the opening possession of the third quarter. Fletcher off to Zaya Cook. Cook had nine in the first half. Bree Beal didn't play a ton in the first half. Fletcher. Out to Boston, still trying to find the range this year from outside the three-point line. Last touched by a and it'll be South Carolina ball. We saw early in the first quarter, South Carolina, and I'm using air quotes when I say struggled a little bit against this out-of-bounds zone. Second quarter executed so much better and were able to get so much better looks at the rim. Feet inside, off the fingertips of Saxton. Turnover, South Carolina. Seventh turnover for the Gamecocks. Here's KK Green. Bowls on the entry, broken up by Saxton. Another steal for South Carolina. Here they are in transition. And Bowles has got to deliver that ball faster inside of Malone before that switch on the weak side comes. The entry. Turned over by South Carolina. Not the crisp start for either side that you'd hope to see coming out of the locker room. Bowles uses the screen, can't get the three. And Beal's got the rebound. And Kindred, who's been battling foul trouble, picks up her fourth personal foul. She knows what that means. She's just going to head right to the sideline. You know, you see Joni Taylor there. One thing that you've noticed watching A&M games is the positivity that she has tried to bring. I mean, she knows it's going to be tough this year. It's not a Hallmark movie for them this year. I mean, this is a challenging season, new coach, new system. Players adjusting to that system, they are going to take their lumps this year. Absolutely. I mean, and that's one of the things, because I focus on culture when I watch film. How is the team responding when there's adversity? And the one thing that's been consistent for AM is they have stayed the course. And I attribute that to Joni Taylor. She's a teacher, and she knows that they can't focus on wins and losses. It's about getting better. And when they were down to five players in practice for almost two weeks, they played two games, and this team got better during that stretch. Today, they are just overmatched. 
But my key for them would be, can they be better the second half than they were the first half? That would be growth for the Aggies. Malone, we talked about in the first half, she's good on the offensive glass. She will get a trip to the free throw line after Beal had knocked down the three-pointer on the other end for her first points. Well, South Carolina just moving the ball, making the extra pass, forcing the rotation by the Aggies, and just a little bit too late to get out to Bree Bill. Jada Malone, five in the first half, adds to her total at the line. So we saw it at Georgia. Joni Taylor had great success there, 140 wins in her seven seasons at Georgia. When she's had a couple of years to build the program in the vision she wants people to see it as, what will it look like? I think, I think you're going to see a much quicker tempo team. I mean, we're used to seeing her teams get up and down the floor. We're used to seeing much more high-pressure defensive teams. They just don't have the depth to do those things right now. And, and Eric, one thing, in this transfer portal era, I know a lot of fans will be like, hey, she brought this recruit with her. Why aren't they better, this or that? Well, one, that big recruit sitting on the bench, Janiah Parker, Parker. But the other piece is this team is young. Those teams that transition so quickly usually have veteran players that are transferring with a coach. Another foul called on AM. You see the resume for Joni Taylor, player at Alabama, coach at Georgia. National team experience as a coach now, Team USA under 18 head coach and assistant for the senior team. So she had a busy summer. Uh, and you're, <laughs> you're, you're glossing over the big part two gold medals this summer. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. But coaching for Team USA, moving her young family to Texas from Athens. There is the family, husband Darius and the kids, JC and Drew. Darius, of course, general manager for the Connecticut Sun, working with Jen Rosati and Morgan Tuck and head coach Steph White. Yeah, congratulations, Darius. He deserves this. Well, you know, that's another thing. You think about the personal piece of it. Like, well, you, you know, you've moved your family. And, and Joni pointed out to us, it's happened a couple times. Darius was an assistant coach for Dawn Staley at Temple and here at South Carolina. And then when Joni got the job at Georgia, he gave up what he was pursuing to go with her because she was becoming a Division I head coach. Battle for the loose ball. Lost out of bounds and we will go the other way. And there was discussion when they first got married about living separately and doing that. And he said, I'm not going to coach against my wife. And he made the decision to give up his, his position here at South Carolina. And I got to tell you, that was during the Asia Wilson era. He helped recruit Asia Wilson that every South Carolina fan knows about. I think JC was coaching up dad there for a moment too. <laughs> that stepped out of bounds. And then he was working, we mentioned, with Dawn as an assistant. You mentioned the Asia Wilson connection, but moved on. Then was working with the Atlanta Dream, and then the opportunity comes up to go to Texas A&M for Joni Taylor, and they're like, let's do it. So Joni knows that her husband's made some sacrifices, but it's been rewarded because he was then hired by Jen Rosati in the Sun to be the general manager at Connecticut in the WNBA. So it's really worked out in many ways for the Taylor family. I think it's worked out best for JC and Drew because I think they've uh, hit the concession stand pretty hard here tonight. <laughs> I'm jealous. Zaya Cook to the basket for South Carolina for two. Well, again, no one's stopping ball, and Zaya Cook's just a veteran. You don't stop me, I'm going to take it all the way. 30 point lead for Carolina. Green thought better of it with Cardoso shadowing her. Somehow that caught the iron. Looking for the foul was Jones. Beal, who was there defensively, got down the other end quickly and finds Cook open for three. <laughs> South Carolina has outscored the Aggies 9-1 here to start the second half. And Eric, you're starting to see some fatigue by the Aggies. Players standing up vertically on offense, just standing. And I've said it earlier, just putting so much pressure on the one-on-one -on -one having to create by an individual player against this really good team defense of South Carolina. 
Beal gets her hands in there, gets the tie up. Possession arrow pointing South Carolina's way. Well, for any young guard out there, if no one stops you in transition, you take it all the way. And Zaya Cook just slices and dices. And the next possession spots up and then just has a little something extra after the make. So Cook will head to the bench. Fletcher, Beal, Boston, Cardozo, and Cooper on the floor now for South Carolina. Cooper, good minutes in the first half. Beal hit a three earlier, knocks down another. Shooting is contagious, and you're starting to see that, just the shooter spotting up and knocking them down for South Carolina. Well, South Carolina, they're at 38% right now from outside the three-point line. If they can be a 38% team this season from outside the three-point line, that would be a huge improvement from where they are out of non-conference play, 29% in non-conference. Malone from outside. Boston the rebound, and Carolina wants to run. Beal with Cardoso, and Beal into traffic. It's fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line when we come back to Columbia. Well, South Carolina came in tonight only averaging four made threes a game, already at five. Bree Bill knocking down her second one of the evening. What's your go-to dance move, Coach? Right now? Right now. The Baltimore strut. Give me your best Don Staley dance move. Best Don Staley dance move ever now is snatch it. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> snatch it. Snatch it. Give me your go-to Don Staley impersonation. Take care of the ball! I haven't mastered it, but I got, got pretty good at it. That ain't it either. That ain't it. Boop. Boop. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I love that. I am a little disappointed that you did not have a Baltimore strut off with Dawn Staley. What? Because I mean, you missed an opening there. I did because, Eric, I had to go to TikTok to learn what the Baltimore <laughs> strut was. <laughs> you, you didn't know what the Baltimore strut was. Well, I think Dawn was just waiting for someone to finally ask her what her favorite dance was so she could, I mean, she was making locking eyes with the camera. She was doing the pause. I think we should get her on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, oh, that's a good point. Aaliyah Boston bringing props to properly. I have a feeling she may be uh, looking at things here and uh, Aaliyah's like, oh no. Is she looking at the turnover ca category? Because Carolina does have nine. Not horrible, but. Well, thank you for bringing the Baltimore strut and <laughs> Dawn Staley doing the Baltimore strut into our lives, Christy Thomas Scotty. I, I aim to please. There's Boston inside, won't drop. Cardoso there, no. Cardoso there, yes. You can't try to jump with South Carolina, and that possession was what we've been talking about all game. Aggies turn, don't get a body in them, and South Carolina's going to win that battle every time. I must say, we've had the opportunity to broadcast quite a few South Carolina games over the last several years. As AM works with three to go on the shot clock. Two, one, Beal gets another stop, another turnover. That's 15 turnovers. I don't remember Dawn Staley taking this spot at the end of the bench where she is right now. I, I, that's a new one to me as you look at the work on the offensive glass. If at first you don't succeed, and this is what South Carolina is going to do to you, it's not first shot that you have to worry about when you play the game pots. It is that second and third opportunity. And Dawn's taking in a new vantage point here for the third quarter, new to me at least. Maybe she's been down there a time or two before. Oh, Cardoso, she had a perfect view for that as her big got inside to get two more. McKenzie Green, defended by Johnson. Still with it. Malone trying to help with the screen. Jones, an open look. 
There haven't been a ton of open looks for AM, so when they get one, it's a bit of a surprise because of the way South Carolina has just been all over them defensively. Now AM gets a stop. Well, and we mentioned the injuries and that Green is back tonight. McKenzie Green, that is, is back tonight. But it's still about chemistry. And one thing I'm seeing is just the timing of the execution on offense. It just has not been there. Credit South Carolina with that. But some of it is also just how hard the Aggies have had to work on both ends of the floor. And you're starting to see some fatigue. And a foul called on Jada Malone. That'll be her third. Substitutions for South Carolina. Ashlyn Watkins comes into the game. Shania Fagan is in for Carolina. 12 players got in in the first half alone for South Carolina. Nine scored. Watkins looking for her first points. And Eric, this is something that you just see with South Carolina. Depth. And yes, they produce, but they also wear you down because they stay so fresh. Their scoring averages go up by each quarter throughout the season and in overtime, as you, you call that Stanford game, and their opponents continue to go down. They just put pressure on you on both ends of the floor. You know, I think a lot of people look at it and say, well, wait, you've got 14 players and there's one ball. How, how are you going to make this work? And I think the motivation, the buy-in is that back-to-back -back championship. You are seeing some players sacrifice. Aaliyah Boston's a perfect example. Her numbers are not going to match what she did last year as a National Player of the Year. Now, when they play nationally ranked teams, the numbers skyrocket. When you've played in so many big games in your career, you know, like Bree Beal and Aaliyah Boston, they are going to bring things at a different level. They're not getting the minutes to put up the points, the rebounds, the blocks. Yeah, well, and Eric, to your point, against ranked teams, Aaliyah Boston's numbers, she is up four points a game from her season average, and she is up almost four rebounds as well. So again, big stage, Aaliyah Boston is ready, but I'll challenge you that it's not just the pursuit of back-to-back, -back, it is also the tutelage of Don Staley, as well as these young ladies come here not just to win national championships, but to get pro ready. And so they know that they've got to sacrifice for the good of the team, for themselves to get bigger, uh, to get better and reach those goals. Fagan misses the first a reminder, still more women's basketball to come tonight. You'll see the Kentucky Wildcats and the Mizzou Tigers when we're done here at CLA to close out our doubleheader on opening night in the SEC. How many threes do you think will go up in that game tonight? <laughs> three, the three meter will be up and running in that showdown between Kentucky. A lot of new faces on that Kentucky team as well as life after Ryan Howard gets going. Green, and there's a steal. Fagan takes it away, and she'll take it in for two more. Fagan now with nine. She came in averaging seven and a half points a game. She is a player who's much improved from her freshman year. Four minutes a game last year, two points a game. Here she is defensively. Pettacord had to change her shot and gets it to drop. Maya Pettacord gets her first points of the evening, and that will do it for quarter number three. Defense in that quarter, elite for South Carolina. Offense is not too shabby either. They gave up three points. They scored 19, sharing the ball, spreading the wealth, and stretching the lead to a 62-21 advantage after three.
Well, I know a lot of people, once they see the preseason poll come out, they just kind of crumble up the paper or hit delete in this digital era and say, well, it's it's not worth anything. But I love to look at it and just say, okay, this is a snapshot. Before non-conference play began, this is what the preseason poll looked like. And now as we go into conference play, where you're going to be playing Thursday, Sunday, or maybe you're playing a Monday, it just gets into that rhythm of conference play. How do you think the poll looks as we – head into conference play after what you've seen so far? I think Mississippi State is way too low. I think they're going to make a serious run. Uh, I, it looks like Tennessee is trying to kind of sort it out. And, again, I never panicked about Tennessee in the non-conference. They played a really <laughs> well, difficult. I know some folks not, in Knoxville that exactly, may have been. I'm about to say, I know there were some ball fans, but they played a really difficult non-conference schedule. I think oh, yeah. it's going to pay dividends for them now that they've hit SEC Well, plays. look where they were. That A killer schedule. Mm -hmm. Two and four start. We're dealing with injuries, Tamari Key with her situation. And now look where they are. They won tonight in Gainesville, 77-67. Rakia Jackson had 28 points. She was 10 of 13 from the floor. They're 7-2 and two since that 2-4 and four start. And those two losses in those last nine games were for Virginia Tech and Stanford, two top 10 teams. So they have played a very challenging schedule. And Raven Johnson stepped out of bounds, and it will be Texas A&M basketball. I'm interested in Mississippi State and seeing them. Sam Purcell's first SEC game coming tonight. They won with ease against Vanderbilt to stretch their winning streak to seven. Jessica Carter had 21 points. That's a big story to follow in the SEC this year. 72-44 was the final in Nashville tonight. Well, Eric, in this league, you've got to have great point guard play and you've got to have great post play. And that's why I say keep your eye on Mississippi State because they have both. A&M, after going 0 for 8 from outside the three-point line in the third quarter, they get a three from Sydney Bowles. Her first points of the second half, now with eight. And a foul is called on Pettacore. And me here's first step with the ball in her hands is so long. AM was playing off of her, but because of her stride, she could get there one dribble and initiate the contact and get to the free throw line. Six foot four, Leticia Me here. Of course, international experience with Team Canada. Fourth place in Sydney at the Worlds. You say 6'4", I always focus on the 6'10 wingspan when it comes to a meteor. <laughs> Cook the only one in double figures right now for South Carolina. Great balance, 10 different scores for the Gamecocks and stretching the lead out here to 40 in the fourth. And you're seeing South Carolina go to a matchup zone as well now. A&M just needs to be patient, but they need to try to pull two defenders and reverse the ball. Fagan with the rebound to Johnson, the long bounce, gathered up by Cooper. Turnover. Green takes it at Fagan, which is a mistake. Seven blocks for South Carolina tonight. You know, in some ways, hats off to Mackenzie Green because she's trying to make something happen no for her No fear, offense. right? You exactly. like that. I no like fear. At the you, same time, you, you got to know who you're going at. You, I'm sitting next to a scrappy guard who had no fear. So that's a, that was a little flashback for you, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I, I when she crossed half court, I'm like, is she going to do it or not? I respect the fight in Green. <laughs> I'm not sure that I would have done the same from just knowing how good South Carolina is at the rim and blocking those shots. Stepping back and trying a three and missing. Texas A&M, two for 21 from outside the three-point line tonight. McKenzie Green will check out. KK Green will come on. And Eric, we've talked about A&M and the pace they need to play at because of their lack of depth. And it just puts so much pressure on their half-court offense because there's not a transition game for them consistently game to game. And you're seeing that today against a, well, a, a team that has scouted them really well. They're taking away passes. They're taking away entry passes and just making it so hard for them to execute. Chloe gets into the game. Talasia Cooper knocks down the three. 
She is the second Carolina player into double figures, now with 10. Had nine last game against Coastal, so her number's coming up. Opening night in the SEC, South Carolina. Team that lost their season opener in SEC play at Missouri last year. Overtime and a stunning upset. Won't happen here tonight against an undermanned Texas A&M team down two starters. Jada Malone scoring for the Aggies. Johnson left open for three. No, Kitts tapped it, but into the hands of Pettacourt. Well, and, and that's a shot. I mean, Joni Taylor said, we just got to hope they can't make the outside shots because they were going to play off of it. And that time, it was almost like Raven Johnson didn't know what else to do but shoot. Ashlyn Watkins going to be called for the foul. Pettacord, great little hesitation move and gets Watkins off her feet and draws the foul. First foul on Watkins and another one who goes for a little fake. This time it's Fagan who gets whistled for the foul. South Carolina led by 18 after one. They were up by 25 at halftime. Good offense by AM, but Patty just can't get it to go. And a rebound comes to South Carolina. Cooper. Olivia Thompson into the game for the first time. Kitts will try it from outside. Rebound to AM. Kindred into game with the four fouls. Bowls on the floor with four. Malone traveling. She traveled there, but I got to tell you, I've liked what I've seen of Malone in the last two weeks. She's improving, and even tonight, she's had to make a lot. She's had to play a lot longer stretches than she has before, but she has continued to fight. That's all you can do, fight possession to possession and know it's a long SEC season, 16 games. And just hope you're building to the fact that the second half of the season is going to look a lot better than the first half of the season, especially when we talk about the players they hope to have back. Janiya Barker, Tanea Hilton, Sydney Roby, whistle on the foul card. Matter of fact, you talked about Barker, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia's top recruit who followed Joni Taylor to Texas A&M. There is a big difference with her and without her on the floor for the Aggies. And I was just kind of wondering what has been the effect of her offensive, of the, the effect on the offense without her. And it's not just her scoring that was remarkable. It was the team scoring. She's such a great facilitator. She rebounds so well. And, and you see the numbers and just the impact it has had on this team with her being on the bench. It's a right wrist fracture. The hope is she can return this season. In order for that to happen, they'd have to just continue to see healing in the bone, not need surgery. So they're still watching that and hoping that talented freshman who went for 19 against Rice, averaging 12 points a game, leading the team in scoring, was injured against Kansas, so missing her fourth straight game. One thing we've noticed about Janiah as well, no matter what song they play, pregame or in between whistles, she's got to dance for it. But I haven't seen the Baltimore strike. No, because she was not watching this game to know that Dawn Staley is mastering the Baltimore strut. I'm sorry, it's snatch, snatch. No, it's the Baltimore strut, but that's the that's what she said a, a oh, dozen times. Yeah, See, yeah. this is why I didn't try it. Well, this is why I'm here for all dance move lessons and information. 
I mean, you can ask me anything. Foxtrot, Rumba, Merengue, Cha Cha, Baltimore Strut. I got it Partner, all for you. Nobody did that go. at Media Days. No one even knew what those were at Media Days. <laughs> Except for me. Now you know. Now I know. The more you know. Closing in on five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's been all South Carolina trying to strut their way to a 13 0 record here this season. The winning streak. Extends back to the SEC Tournament Championship game. Count it, and the foul. It's been a really nice performance for the freshman, Talasia Cooper. I wasn't quite sure how much playing time Cooper would get because Don Staley was on her and shoot around, but the freshman has responded <laughs> with the and one. South Carolina on top 70 to 26, getting great contributions from the bench. Now, when we are going to break, you referenced the fact that one of the top performers for South Carolina today, Talasia Cooper, was not one of the top performers in the eyes of her head coach during pregame shoot around today. Yeah, I mean, it was just her attention to detail on defense. Well, I got to tell you, Cooper's been ready on offense. You see the little hesitation, sees the seam, gets by one defender, and then draws the contact for the and one. But Eric, this is what Don Staley expects. It's not about her starters putting up big numbers. It's about the entire team. 36 bench points out of the team, 70 from the bench. And this is par for the course because they have averaged half on the season, half of their team averaged 83 points per night. As we've talked about throughout this telecast, everyone getting a hand in what has been a remarkable run, number one in the AP poll for a 27th consecutive poll. That's the fifth longest streak in the history of the poll. The record is 51 set by UConn, a streak that ended in 2010. And really, when you talk about this year, John Staley mentioned it early in the season. You know, are you a dynasty? That's, that's the question. They, they have performed great last year and what we've seen so far this year. But Dawn Staley says, you know, to get there, you have to have a little, and this is the quote, a little back-to-back -back in you, which means back-to-back -back championships. Because only UConn doing it three times, Tennessee twice, and USC have been repeat national champions. So you want to get into that club, you got to follow through this year. One of the things that's helped them in many ways, I think, for the coaching staff maybe is what happened in 2017 because they won in 2017 maybe in 2018 you're like oh man we could do that again mm -hmm. can't we it's not that easy it, it's not easy and here's the other part we can talk about trying to repeat but it is with a target on your back each and every night and, and that's what they have to go through and you know as i got ready for this game i really thought to myself all right if i was facing them if i was in Johnny taylor's shoes what would I try to take away? Because that's what every opposing coach wants to do. you got to take away a strength. Well, this is where I think this team is so dangerous because the bench production and the variety of players on the bench right now helps Don Staley win in so many different ways. So a foul called on Jada Malone. There's a bit of a protest here. Malone was setting a screen and at first, I think Joni Taylor thought the whistle was going against, and obviously she feels like it's a wrong call, but somewhere else on the court, <laughs> there, and that's the capper right there. This is Malone you know, setting in and hitting the screen on Kitts. From our angle, it looked like a foul. Malone has fouled out. Bowles has fouled out. Here's Cooper. Back for Kitts, and that's travel. Good decision here just to let Petticord bring it up. I wouldn't mess with Cooper one-on-one -on -one right now, the way she's been playing. Here's Jones. And a foul is called on Chloe Kitts. So Texas A&M opening up conference play here tonight. Their next game, they'll host Florida on Sunday. Gators falling to Tennessee today. 
after falling to 23rd ranked Oklahoma up the road in Charlotte at the Jumpman Invitational and a nine game winning streak. Florida's without Jordan Merritt. Zippy Broughton. Spinning inside is Jones and another block for Fagan. That's nine. Again, they're averaging better than 10 blocks a game on the season. So you've got to be a good outside shooting team, a good mid-range jumping shooting team to beat the Gamecocks because you're not going to get all the way to the rim consistently. That's where Kindred tried to score from one drop down. Cooper drawing a crowd and Kindred getting on the floor. Good hustle there to get the tie up and it'll be Texas A&M basketball. And Eric, you mentioned the injuries at Florida. I think that's something that's really playing a big part across the SEC right now. Tamari Key lost for the year for right. Tennessee. I mean, it's so unfortunate, but it just goes back to how fortunate South Carolina is because they have so much depth. Yeah, every team's been hit by something, some a lot harder than others, but South Carolina has been the team that has avoided it. That depth has helped. We talked about being without Bree Hall here tonight. Good defensive player. He's had some good moments this year, averaging six and a half points a game. That one will drop in. Fagan with 11, Cooper with 13, Cook with 14 to lead South Carolina tonight. And a foul is called on Cooper. Such great execute on the half court. Off the on-ball screen, Fagan just ducks in and she knows that help side's coming. And you saw how quickly she got that ball up and out of her hands and off the glass. First foul on Cooper. Two and a half to go here in the fourth. Pettigore. Kick back outside, last touched by Cooper with seven to shoot. A&M basketball. That's one where Jones knew about the shot blocking ability, so she was just looking to kick it out, and there was no passing angle for her to get it out. Pettigord launches and makes a three. Now there's a handful of players you look at, like Maya Pettigord, the minutes that Sidney Bowles has received. There's a couple of freshmen right there who have been forced into bigger minutes than would normally be planned on for them to start their careers at Texas A&M. Some tough lessons, but they are learning here on the job. And not just minutes, but roles. You know, as true freshmen to come in and be expected, game in and game out, to put up points in a big way, to defend players sometimes bigger or faster, or and in this situation, much more experienced. You know, that's where I go back for A&M. They lost two non-conference games. Morgan State had to cancel right before tip uh, for health and safety concerns. And then because of what occurred out in Las Vegas during Thanksgiving, A&M chose not to play in that event. Purdue decided to come to them, but they lost another non-conference game. Again, when you're building and you have a young team, you need game reps. Fagan denied. Kindred needs help and gets it from Pettacore. Pettacore with seven points. And she touched it last. Good job by Cooper. South Carolina ball. Well, Eric, I'm wondering if we're seeing the fifth trump card now because Cooper's now running the point for South Carolina. Oh, so now there are five potential point guards. So let's go through the list. Zia Cook and Leticia and me here. And Raven Johnson and Kiara Fletcher, and now you're going to throw Talaysia Cooper into the mix. Cooper has a new career high with her 15 points. Previous was 14. So she is the leading scorer for South Carolina tonight on a night where Aaliyah Boston does not get a double-double. Doesn't come close. Six points and five rebounds for Aaliyah Boston, but another night where she puts aside what she needs and the minutes just 19 for her tonight for what the team needs and as a result they're up 74 33. 
What? This is the security of Aaliyah Boston. It is about the team success, not her own. And it's for her, you got to believe the long game. She wants to go back to back. No question. Kitts on the turnaround. Kindred flies in for the rebound. Final minute here in Columbia. All South Carolina from the jump. Came out of the locker room after halftime and turned it up even higher on defense, outscoring Texas A&M 19-3 in that third quarter. Kitts. First points for the freshman here tonight. Scored 13 against Coastal. She was asked about playing here in front of this big crowd, another big crowd here tonight. Said, I was scared to look up at the crowd when I came <laughs> on the court. I don't blame her. She was only in high school a few weeks ago. Well, and already one of the crowd favorites, as evidenced by that last applause when she scored. shooting 24% from the field against the South Carolina defense. Three of 22 from outside the three-point line. KK Green makes the first. Shot clock is off. Dawn Staley puts her hand up. And now the crowd here at Colonial Life Arena can salute their Gamecocks, who have won for a 33rd straight time on their home floor. 76-34 the final. Well, from South Carolina, it's what we expected. Dominating defense, dominating on the glass, great rim protection. I think a and only going to learn from this, only going to get better. And I'm eager to see the Aggies here, especially after another couple of SEC games. 42 of the 76 points scored by South Carolina came from the bench. An impressive performance for the number one team in the country. Now 13-0 on the season. The winning streak now at 19 after a 76-34 win. For Christy Thomas-Scuddy and our crew, I'm Eric Freed. So long from South Carolina. Let's get you back to the studio. <laughs>